scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You are my Spirit of the living God, on this rainy night we are still gathered in your presence because we believe you. We place value on your wisdom. We place value on your anointing. We place value on you, the custodian of the power of God. We ask tonight that you visit us in no small way. Let our hearts be open, O oh God. Your people have made tremendous sacrifices to hear you speak again. I ask, O oh God, that your voice be clear tonight. Let there be all kinds of impartations, O oh God. Bring your people to very strange levels of encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated if you can. I'd like us to honor again those outside all the overflows. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot of sacrifice. Thank you so much. We will stand in the golden sea in the new Jerusalem and our will be no That is stable and cry holy is the land. We will worship and adore you evermore. We will stand in the golden city, the new Jerusalem, and our pain and all our struggles will be no. At your table and cry, oh, it's the land. We will worship and adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very, very strategic. This is for me. It's a teaching for the body of Christ. We are going to pray. It's actually a prayer meeting. If we are unable to finish today, we'll continue um, wherever the Lord will grant us grace to stop. But I'm sharing something that I believe will challenge our hearts. It's a very ancient truth that most pastors, most church leaders are forgetting. What I'm sharing with you tonight is the secret of preserving the precepts of God in a territory and in a generation. Hallelujah. Open our eyes, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. Oh, 
This was a testimony in the heavens that we the redeemed have not only been saved and delivered but that we have been made unto our God kings and priests some versions say a kingdom of priests please listen and it says and we shall reign on the earth we have been made a kingdom of kings and of priests and we shall reign on the earth these two dimensions that the bible reveals is very critical for kingdom advance in any territory the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the revelation of believers as kings and the revelation of their priesthood the bible says we have been made both kings and priests and that the system of our legislature must be such that it is covered within the scope of our kingship and priesthood. That if we find ourselves living as kings alone, there is a dimension of God and kingdom advance that cannot be effectively dispensed. And if we ignore that dimension as kings and focus on our priesthood alone, as important as that is we will still rob God from finding expression within a territory very important teaching tonight the first thing I want you to know tonight is that kingdom advancement is territorial it's an information that I do not want us to be take lightly and to be careless over kingdom advancement although the mandate is global God's system of advancement is territorial everybody say kingdom advancement is territorial this for me is already a big deliverance for men of god because sometimes in a bid to take over the world are we together now we do not understand that the system of kingdom advance is the progression of god's purposes across territories are we together from one territory to the other god's idea of globalizing the earth with his presence and ideology is not just jumping from place to place it's not just building branches but being able to establish practically the life the character the nature of the kingdom across a territory so god's rating for a believer for a man of god for a church although your the scope of your mandate may be global but you are rated based on your efficiency across the territory you have been planted per time are we together now that means that if god has planted koinonia in zaria in this time and in this season no matter how effective our teachings the external ministrations are across the nations of the earth that is not going to be the parameter for God's rating. Primarily, he is going to judge us based on the efficiency. How we have taken advantage of his presence, the intelligence he has supplied, alongside the grace that has come by the supply of the spirit. How we have been able to establish his purposes across this territory. So that's the first point I want you to understand tonight. That this king priest dimension, the system of legislature is highly territorial we live in a time where there is such appetite for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that we love expanding it's a proof of growth but sometimes we can be carried away 
in the euphoria of the, the, the sociological effect of expansion and miss out on territorial impact where we are unable to to live out the fullness of God's expectation as a portion to a territory it was Jesus that taught us in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Matthew 5 14 to 16 this is what Jesus said he was teaching and he said ye are the light of the world now when you read and try to understand what Jesus is saying just with head knowledge it can be very deceptive because you see the speakings of God is such that he speaks to men when he's speaking to one man he speaks to the nation in him are you getting the point now I told you that when God speaks to us we must learn the character of God's communication I've taught it here again and again in Koinonia that number one when God speaks to you he never speaks as though he's speaking to a man the first thing we need to understand about the speakings of God I'm just digressing to help us understand God never speaks to men as though he's talking to men he speaks to men as though he's talking to himself number one number two God's communications are prophetic. The relevance of his words always transcend the individual who is hearing it. The individual hearing that word is only a representation of all those who will be benefactors of that word. God never speaks to a man and then limits the blessing of that word to that individual alone. He sent a word to Jacob and then that word lighted upon Israel. God always speaks to nations in men. Are we learning now? So every time God speaks to you, sometimes you see that the word is heavy because he's speaking in nations through you. And if we do not understand the speakings of God, we will carry mandates that were not part of his scope of dealing with us, thinking because you had it. God can speak to me for instance. And say the vision he has given this ministry is replicating the fullness of God's life across the earth. And I can walk in the deception believing that it simply means that I will pioneer the move of God in every nation. No, when God was speaking, he was speaking to you in me. Are we together now? It is through that prophecy that mandate comes to pass. Now, if you do not understand this dimension of God's speakings, you will end up in error. His rating for men is global prophetically but experientially he deals with men territorially learn this the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in Philadelphia not the church in the world when the Spirit of God began to speak in revelations from where we would get some of these things he says right the communication was to the whole world but he broke it down to several churches. He would come to this church and commend them. I have weighed you. I have seen what you have done across that territory. A and B and C is what you have done in alignment to my purposes. D and E, you are in defiance to my precepts. Here's my advice. Correct yourself. Otherwise, because of your disalignment, you and that territory will suffer certain things. His system of marking was territorial. It was never generic. He did not generalize his probing. He went to the churches one by one. The church in Pagamos. The church in Philadelphia. The church in Smyrna. The church in um, you know, Ephesus. And so on and so forth. Kingdom advance is territorial. It is true that we are the light of the world. It is true that we are a city that is set on a hill. But then we must understand that this king priest dimension is such that God places men in territories when God wants to promote men he promotes men by supplying three things number one a greater dimension of illumination I'm, I'm touching on many things now the first way God promotes men is by opening them to deeper access understanding the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom the moment the portals of the heavens the portals of revelation are open to you higher and greater than that which you have seen and known then it's a sign of promotion in the spirit number two grace that anointing that agency capacity in the spirit is multiplied unto you and then number three 
there is an increase and a portioning of greater physical territories not just spirit, spiritual territories alone god lifts men by increasing the span and the influence of their territory are we together acts chapter 1 verse 8 very popular scripture jesus was teaching having resurrected he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave and then they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel and he replied by saying it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care then verse 8 says but ye shall receive power listen carefully after that the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of god witnesses witnesses unto me then he begins to apportion territories he would have said you will be witnesses unto me all over the world full stop but now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start and he's telling them look 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 the goal is the utmost part of the earth but it will be broken into territories first jerusalem then judea then samaria and then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth the first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected, the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, Peter was preaching. And when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts, the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart. Listen carefully. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. This is the part I'm going to. He said, for this promise is for you are you saying now for your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said, I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. So why tell us again? It is to you, your children, children's children, and to those who are far off, as many as the Lord will call. God's dealings is territorial. That means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world, but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned. That is where your ranking, that is where your marking, that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres, both in the spirit and physically. Our obsession for more, our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful. Write this down. Our mandate As matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence the power the system the glory of god in that territory if we fail to carry this out then we have failed woefully listen again that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers not just to be prosperous that's important not just to build churches and ministries but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us that means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria listen carefully there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos in Kogi state and those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers 
not just those who advance and win souls but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God this in my opinion is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western Church they, they, they lost a part of their assignment they were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated so there was a generation that lost touch with another generation and everybody now is guessing his opinion there is a curriculum of a God that has been apportioned to that territory and it was within the power of all the men of God within that dispensation to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth when a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost they cannot hold certain dimensions of him the church in Nigeria it's a wonderful place you know that I love the church I love the body of Christ but I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty and we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible. Whilst there is a dimension of that, we are largely missing it. Because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination. Our idea is to make sure that in every territory, there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance that there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory if we fail to do that we have missed a lot if you're understanding me say amen one of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation it is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire are we together now yes tonight tonight is 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 more it's more like a minister's conference it's a challenge to believers and everybody but the challenge is is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people groups territories we must trust god for understanding on how kingdom advance happens there is too much guessing in the body of christ and everybody believes he is right but our results are showing that there is inefficiency there is inefficiency somewhere there are activities going on there are programs going on conferences going on and nothing is wrong with those things in themselves except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated and that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance it is God's desire John chapter um, 15 now and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, i'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother 
or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of god for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well i don't know what to do with this person what is step b after giving your life to christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this i truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of god that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of god ignorance of the methodology of god we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirits to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of god the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what i'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next set of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know god many believers do not know the holy spirit many believers do not know the voice of the holy spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of god many believers go to church i agree many believers take communion i agree many believers join in general church prayer i agree but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation i'm not talking of men of god i'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noisemakers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill I think it's Philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining nor arguing I'm sure I'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um, okay for God it 
that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preserve us of the ordinances of god in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of god for in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the Son of Man. And he began to describe various attributes of him. And then it was God himself who began to give John that interpretation. He says that those lampstands represent the church, the ecclesia, God's body. The lampstands that Christ is found in the midst of them. That light that is also a city set on a hill. That should never, never be confused. He says it is the church. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Christianity is not in danger. Listen carefully. Church is not in danger. But the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The ordinances, the secrets of God that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger we scarcely understand the secrets of god the pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace a man of power and relevance i want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory seeing fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit volcano in the spirit she goes kind of like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman come for somebody this man is success 
I'm still seeing this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When, when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show. It's not show. He's bringing witness. He's bringing witness to the spirit of man. Because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's, he's working on people. I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled in an individual who was born of flesh and blood. But produce an effect that is strangely supernatural. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with the anointing. No man is born with spiritual power. Men follow pathways. It's an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of god's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust god to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young believer who loves god does is he finds 
the tapes of five, six, seven, eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that. But the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed. That's a joke. If that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man, it's a, it's a big joke. A big joke. The realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom. It's a place where men are made genuinely. There, there are, there are, there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit gives that ranking. Nobody, you can pretend you have it. Many people pretend they have it. But when the door settles down, you hear the testimonies. Kai, we have lost something serious. We must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God. Otherwise, some of the young believers coming up, the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again. And then they get born again and they don't know what to do. And it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in, week out. Everybody is a general overseer. Everybody is a president. Everybody is an apostle. Everybody is a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Hilarious ordinations happening left, right and center. And everybody is just holding the mic and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach. I say this out of love for the body. But we must return. We are losing something. We are losing something very powerful. We are losing something. The ordinances the precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that the average believer studies the bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer warfare and intercession write it down a lost act in the body of christ genuine warfare and intercession let me tell you something if we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another i promise you i promise you our our spiritual 
ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30 because at the, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at 30 God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment and God said that mercy dimension of me was still there but I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church I'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of God over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God certain things can happen to territories they don't even know why it came and how it came but a man stood for a land that I should not destroy it but I found did he say I did not find human beings there were human beings many but I found none that man built in capacity and understanding The ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint not just need driven prayers alone but we must graduate from realms of just praying give me tea give me bread to taking over lands that because of your presence in the territory you subdue the controlling powers the powers that mold the mindsets of people the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation that you come into a city and find accidents anyhow all kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers that's what men did in the Bible Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah are we together preserve the family of Lot the wife chose the way she wanted Joseph stood in preserve certain things Daniel stood in preserve are you not men who preserve the purposes of God their generation the ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God 
are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully i hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something satan is many things a fool is not one of them i hear what i'm saying satan is defeated satan is old satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory brothers and sisters it's not because the controlling powers are not there an agency in the spirit a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression that's why I said if we stop praying Or if we concentrate on childish, immature prayer, Lord, give me tea. Tomorrow again, oh God, I forgot to ask for bread yesterday. There is a place where you ask for your needs. But notice how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we reverence you. After reverencing him, the next thing is your agenda, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your kingdom come upon a land, upon a territory. Listen. The concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preserve us of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. Now churches start as intentional, organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God. Are we together? That before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is, in, is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as saying, it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry 
they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress I insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's what dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave Zaria for a three week break and you are in Kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary 
among these five people. We need to define it because the other day I didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady suddenly when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Adam or me too I'm from Adam that one came I don't say from Lagos he said we don't want to bring all these kind of things and we kill the move of God with very frivolous childish things another thing that kills prayer is love no, not love relationship hello I keep saying it, there are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying. All this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister, every brother, you are in love. No sir, this is not how we train people. We train people to look for God first. Press into God, have a testament, a, a track record, then you can love. Now everybody is, is just you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry I'm not saying God cannot use those platforms in fact God should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and serve and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, one time marry and God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and, and usually it's God's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the Lord Jesus Christ let's return to the place of seeking God sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah I like these suits that this one is wearing I know father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata -kata -kata. Le -kota -kata -kata. as it's moving to high in dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory. And then return back. This is how many of those we admire today. That's how they were raised. They were never. A is here asking. Those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started. When you got born again, in two weeks, it will be as if you have spent one year in Christ. Because there was fire everywhere. There still is. But because we're a lot more organized now, it's very difficult. When people got, there were people who would get born again, filled with the Holy Spirit from day two, they start prophesying. And even with the prophesying, they are not going anywhere. Because there are still demons to get out of there. As they finish prophesying, they go and humble themselves and sit down and learn. But now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be taught genuinely to seek God. Say amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. 
I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we will not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selma in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you. For reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not becoming You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence. You know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue. And then one day, let me tell you how God will announce that he has come to that territory. A spectacular move of God will happen. One day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of God breaks out in that house. Breaks out in a house where they hate the Holy Spirit. Guess who the first to be filled with the Holy Ghost will be? The Father himself. And you are wondering, my father? My father? Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer the Holy Spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are it should be a place to come and receive a greater fanning can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact not titles if you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church lock it down and go and start praying alone yes sir yes sir don't invite anybody let them come and meet you praying and you are praying and god is watching you my beloved son no carpet no canopy no mic no suit no nothing but a genuine desire to seek him and god is saying i i am watching listen all this 
all this running around, am I a prophet or am I an apostle? It's nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is. Even if God tells you it will not look like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this I am apostle. This just wait and see it will happen. You are joking. Nothing will happen. It is in the place of prayer. As that fire refines you, it starts drawing you to become something. And everybody starts saying, this is the training of a prophet. Even you, you may mistake yourself for an evangelist. Because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that, no, this training is not an evangelist training. <laughs> Why is this unusual? <laughs> There are people who think they are called in they are some of you here seated you are born prophets with the office of a prophet but you have not seen one vision because it's not about the vision keep praying just continue just continue you will argue with anybody and say no sir i'm not a prophet me i i know i'm a pastor because i'm a good teacher you will find out that teaching is not even part of it just keep praying the refiner's fire comes through that prayer when your heart is being purged are we together now flesh is being taken away one day you will begin to pray and all of a sudden you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me they are wrong they don't know it is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you you say you are a pastor who told you just because someone prophesied he saw in part and he said so he may be right but he may not be it no don't say just because you saw a ring you saw a hand you say i'm a prophet i'm a prophetess i'm an apostle no sir don't flatter yourself let the place of prayer incubate you when you come out fully the name that you are will be shown not just by titles results 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 will show who you are if you're a prophet don't tell us let the results show it show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer show us the acumen the ability to perceive realities that's what makes a prophet show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit don't come and talk jargons and waste our time show us the performance that comes based on the word of god show us the throne in heaven that backs that office don't say i'm an apostle show us the throne that backs you show us the keys of the territory that was given to you we go around bragging calling ourselves names flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back the ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shagata gata. Leketo satos kabriata. 
restore my fire restore it oh God the destiny of a territory is at stake the destiny of a territory is at stake this is not the issue of being a man of God this is not the issue of being in ministry preserve us of the ordinances of the spirit Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good, but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No, sir. Shaka, 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 shaka
Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of God's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what God is doing now don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory so what what happens here every week is the will of God a convergence of men and women are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd that there, there is a joke are the people chairs the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people
Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too uh, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places God is doing mighty things this place is one of them the Bible says and the Lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how god is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles Jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory 
the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our words serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they'll start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is god saying anything that's a sign that god is working god is working something powerful in this time god is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him acts chapter 19 please quickly acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship 
The anointing is a silencer of doubters. Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words. Our noise is too much. We need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19 verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, what did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. So bring this handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it. We rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power, period. Obed-Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time, but something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered, and after two weeks you come back one month nothing has happened that means something is wrong not with you with me i should go back for a retreat and say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god keep these hands anointed keep these hands anointed that's a good prayer to pray for yourself keep these hands anointed May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery. Of the oil you have put upon his hand. He said God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters. What has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh. Oh. Let me agree with you. And we hold people. While we are praying, their eyes are opening. We are the only ones who close our eyes. Because they don't believe in us. They know that that prayer is just nonsense. In Jesus' name. Amen. They say, thank you, sir. And they go back and say, sorry. Can I see this man of God? Because that's the real person they know who solve their problems. I want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute. And say, Lord, put something upon this hand. Put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes. It's not a carnal prayer. I want you to sincerely pray. Shake it like a source of Akabia. Put an anointing upon my hand, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone. And with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. Hallelujah. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves upon them which had an evil spirit you know the name of the lord saying we adjure you they thought it's just by by big manism or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we're reading to verse 20 and then 
14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess this is not confession this is a question you are, you, are, you you stupid man of god you think everybody is faking it he called those who are real known by the realm of the spirit not by members jesus i know paul i know who are you hi who are you when a demon spirit asks you who are you is that a nice thing from the realm of the spirit they are watching you every day you have one suit you went for a program they kept water in front of your table they did a, a good publicity and they said now it's time for the man of God a man of strange anointing and you hold the mic and you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you and all of a sudden the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry I don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They will do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust god to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly Media, don't take it away. Just leave it there so that we'll hurry up, please. Help us. And 
this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the lord was magnified they saw the apostles healing the sick and i'm sure that they said what is there what is there miracles anybody can heal the sons of Sceva went to try it when the demons beat them it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere and the bible says that the people glorified god and then verse 18 says and many that believed did what as a result they came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 we are reading to 20. many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because i saw her cat walking i thought it was all about the before when i touched fire i got a reply and a response that i have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice this is what happened there And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver 20 popular scripture so mightily grew the word of God why because of a public display of miracles signs and wonders we need the supernatural we need to cry for the anointing we need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here, the power of God will throw you. That's not what we are talking about. That, that's not power. We are talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now, you are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back and all of a sudden you will find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. A true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter. It's until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely. Let me give us one more. There are six, but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray. Number one is prayer. Number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory. Number three, an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Number four, intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. The fourth way, the ordinances of God are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers. This is a serious one. Let me tell you this. Failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget God. Not just forget his ordinances, but forget God. I'm watching that and I'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of Christ and even the church in Zaria. Who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now? Everybody has left them. And we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an in intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church 
they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman serve god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia i know that many of you say are they too young to understand ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand you see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down that's the child of a herbalist and they tell you ah that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe that small boy you are saying that is my son is your son in the physical in the realm of the spirit is something else an ancient spirit is seated on that small child there is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things they may be too small to articulate it but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts. And your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria during a church service, who have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the god who can change any man's destiny may god forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know god listen 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 our children must love god and they must love god genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate God I want you to be aware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry receive an anointing for it it's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets let them cram the memory verses that's how we started children now don't know any memory verse again you ask them john 3 16 they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense teach them don't say it's not useful let them know when we were being raised they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying 
I don't plan to stop at all. We must say it again and again. Some of you, God gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools, not with the name of any ministry and bless them. But now that you have become Apostle Joshua Selman, you have become Madam, Madam, whatever, businesswoman or whatever, you have stopped, go back, repent and go back. We have this mentality that when we are ministering to children, it's a sign that we ourselves are children. It's the society that makes it. So in a bit to show that we are matured, we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason, one, two, Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom. There's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourthborn can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. He's insulting you that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined. The day I give birth to a child who insults me, that, that day, I'm not going to concentrate on the child. The spirit that could enter my roof through that child, a child of, maybe it's a child of two, three years, nine, ten years, no. See, Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray, they say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. 
gone are the days when teachers including christian schools i don't know what is christian about the school if they don't pray you have a christian school and you openly said it's a christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what what is what is the christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that i'm busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable he's destroying the life of the student call him to the office sir we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you but we notice that um it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children could there be a problem would you need some counsel nobody should talk to me they are doing all that nonsense and tell him as you finish this rubbish collect your last salary with the cashier go out of this place and never return any good pta they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards they laughed at covenant university laughed at landmark university laughed at mountaintop university but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to cambridge and harvard because they kept god don't throw god and think it will go well with you we'll continue next week six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory. Which one have you missed? Would it be prayer, warfare and intercession? Could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers? You come to the house of God today, you come after one month, or you come to the house of God today, you come when all your arrears are paid, only to come and testify. Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I, love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people. Proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank god for what god is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open Brothers and sisters, 
our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what god was doing to them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like papa people like billy graham still alive these men serve god to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life i can't remember it again. did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will be nothing the jeep and the duplex only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time am i against prosperity no but if that's all you can give a generation if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in merry clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen we're not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven god will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if God has anointed you to heal one million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire.
let's mean business with God this wastage of time let us start with our Jerusalem Zaria let us start with Nigeria you see what is happening in Nigeria you know what most of us are doing what is happening in this nation those who are for A those who are for B but the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits they can read the writings on the wall that this is not an issue of north south east or west this is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love god and the preservers of the truth say it doesn't matter where i come from lord it is your kingdom that must be established can we take a few minutes to pray tonight rise up on your feet there's gonna be a great awakening there's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus, they will be saved. In the next two minutes, hold hands together. And let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, we pray the glory of God across Zaria City, across Savo. Across prison, across Shika, in the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses, preserved in every church, preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray Who stand on the gap on behalf of our land Who stand in the gap on behalf of our land Down on our knees We'll take a stand And pray for the sea for our land second part it says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray Stand in the gap on behalf of our land. We stand in the gap on behalf of our land. Down on our knees, we take a stand and pray for the seed of our land. We'll pray for the needs of our land. Controlling powers over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. Shakatos Kaparia Kadaskalepa. The powers that keep men poor. The powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land. The powers 
that stop development, the powers that stop advancement, the powers that destroy men of God, the powers that destroy churches, the powers that destroy families. We come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus, we come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories, spirits of violence, spirits of wickedness, yokes, burdens, spells, enchantments, divination, manipulations of the heavenly bodies. We come against you in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ grows. Saria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but can we pray for Nigeria? We listen as God looks at the map, He's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities, some villagers, and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the walls. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. Peace in the north. Peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we decree and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself we command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed we curse you we curse you we curse you hallelujah listen listen let's pray against the spirit of sentiment are we together whether Christian, whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone. And we must live together. Are we together? Whether, whether Ipo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives. several parts in Africa and they want to come to Nigeria it's listen 
if you understand this thing it's not about north south east or west it is the devil looking for your destiny and looking for your children i like you to pray and command peace to the walls of this nation every state mention the state by name we command peace peace in plato state peace in Kaduna state peace in lagos peace in kano peace in abuja peace in bauchi They that are with us are greater, greater, greater. Mantos Kalabandigalia. There shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Rababa Prayer point number one. Oh God, by the blood I cry for mercy where i've allowed the devourer i have stolen from my tithe your designated portion i've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers now i realize and i ask for your mercy lift your voice and pray inside and outside lift your voice your tithe is your spiritual circumcision Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. Not by Listen, I give you an assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this. If you take what I've shared tonight, for many of you, this is your secret. It's your password to 
a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night lift your voice is the seventh month the gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 add one more prayer because I see the angels of the Lord already moving let me just add one more prayer listen I want you to pray listen there are giants on every mountain every one of us is holding a prayer request because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go but tonight i want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say i must go tonight lift your voice inside and outside cry I must walk the world that carried out disease must die today. That cancer must die today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow, we just move and we don't stop. So you have one minute while you are praying in tongues. Just write your prayer request very quickly. So that when it's time to pass it, you just pass it very fast. Manta la dosa so predishi la coria da balanabas. Make sure you don't keep silent. Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me, what can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit. Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week, again and again, I kept seeing, please pay attention, can I have strings, 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 hallelujah, I kept seeing again and again, spirits, watch this, spirits leeching onto people, this is what I kept seeing, like a man sitting on a man's shoulder, I saw this over many people. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And the Lord began to, re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families. And the Lord said, when I come up, he said, the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers. Dislodge those powers. I saw them like a man, like a child who sit down on the shoulder of another, bringing a resistance to your destiny. And I'm about to pray for you right now. There are so many people under the sound of my voice. So many people under the sound of my voice. They must go. Heaven is here to assist us. Lift your hands everyone. Inside and outside. There will be such mighty deliverances outside. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. hallelujah i even see someone um, uh, 
suffering from severe migraine but then that migraine you think is just sickness we are about to make a shout brothers and sisters this shout is like the sling of david it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah i'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name jesus my goodness i sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of god will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of god especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you jesus father in the name of your son i pray right now and i sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit i decree and i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch i pray that by this shout oh god there be a visitation that by this shout oh god everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and i command every power that at this shout you will let god's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name i command witchcraft powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft in the name of jesus lift your hands malatata i'm seeing altars on fire that's what i see in the spirit please bring them out altars on fire one more time we're going to shout physically many of you will feel the fire physically physically right now in the name of jesus one two three jesus! oh yes that's fire that's fire that's fire of the holy ghost
I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. Your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating Inside and outside, we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of Jesus. Families, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Father, any family under the yoke of bondage, as they shout this name, let there be a visitation. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'm hearing marital spells. Marital spells. Please lift your hands. Listen. Hear me. Something mighty is about to happen here. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people 
who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as I begin to speak the wind I see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh God visit them right now in the name of Jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one two three Jesus hearing a name Dorcas Dorcas a miracle is coming Dorcas an altar is on fire and I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle Dorcas Dorcas come and stand here hallelujah Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas, where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not based in Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying, She's where is she? Mina, Niger State. She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Father, change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. You believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, it's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he is bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. 
and the Lord is ministering to me the Lord is saying why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her look at me like we shared tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing are you hearing what I'm saying and even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of Jesus Lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of Jesus Christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the Lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the Lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her Dogara Dogara I'm hearing a name Dogara Dogara who is Dogara you your name is Dogara yes sir where's your dad he's at home in Kaduna. He's, he's at home in Kaduna. we have to pray for him what I'm seeing will never if they are permitting anything please and please maybe carry them out of well, we're about to pray please don't worry in the name of Jesus I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident in the name of Jesus it will not come to pass we cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come, there's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family. Because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. It's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. It's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage. Yes, sir. Because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, Do you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand I'll pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they will not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You are all Israel. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just what I'm I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of god is against you in the name of jesus christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of jesus christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of jesus christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name 
name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to, I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of them. Out. Out of them now. Out now. Never to return. At your Lord, live your life. Live your destiny. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cause it for oh, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me, rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me, you come. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah. Come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? You believe me? You will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach, madam. The reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season. That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. The reproach of many years is being rolled away i'm seeing like a baller that's what i'm seeing a trash place where they pour dead and i'm seeing a new seed shooting out and that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the lord is saying i should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand I command you by the blood of Jesus, you foul spirit, you have oppressed this body. In the name of Jesus, I break your covenant, I break your ordinance. There is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady. It's not just her. Can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady? I curse you. Now, I curse you. I curse you by the God of heaven. And I curse you by my office. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse that power. Let her go now. Right now. Release her destiny. Release her family now. By the blood of the eternal covenant. She's free. Go. Release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen. People of God, don't think we are playing games here. I know you may see some of the things happening. These are the powers that have tied down men's life. It's not solved by counseling. You are just moving in the physical. Yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound. We are not embarrassed. We are never embarrassed to set people free. Because that's what Jesus said. There's got to be a way of setting people free. Hallelujah. Father, jobs now. In the name that is above all names. I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life. Lord, I declare everyone called jobless here. 
by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you I compel them to call your loved ones I compel them to favor you here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we we'll begin to pray for the sick shop Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We'll begin to pray for the sick after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, paining you and it looks it's, it's like swollen. This is what I see in the vision that the Lord is showing me. Who is that person? Your leg is swollen. of the legs look what look if if the devil you remember i told you this a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person Imagine what it would do to someone's destiny. I say this without a sense of cynicism. Many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week. Look, we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God. Because God's idea is not just for one platform. Hallelujah. Swollen legs. No, no, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't have to. Madam, I see you too. Your legs. For how long? What's the situation with her? Is her leg swollen? Okay, hold on. She can't walk. Baby, how are you? Hallelujah. Please help us with the mic. Who brought her? Okay, no, it's okay, it's okay. What's your name? Annie. Annie? Your name is Anne. Agnes. Alice. Your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just going to switch to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you, who had a dream? In a dream, it's like something was shot. It's like, I don't know if it was an arrow. I'm seeing something that looks like a dream. And something was shot on your legs. If the person is not here, I'm seeing someone who had that dream. It's like, I don't know if it was like a gun or something, or, an, uh, or a, 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 a sharp object. I know that it was, it's like it was shot to your leg. 
Yes. Something beat me when I was sleeping. I just took up a dream. So blood was coming out of my legs. I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to floor as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You in prayed when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I cursed it. In Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in this thing. It's a, for me to stand or to walk, almost two years. It's broken for Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you catch believe? the coach. As I'm standing now, it's catch huh? the coach. Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it entered his thigh and came and out came through out. the other thigh. This is thigh. the person I'm talking about. And it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his thigh up to his presence. This guy Where is he? Is he here? He's in Lagos, sir. He's in Lagos. Yes, sir. You believe God will touch him? Yes, sir. When I pray for you, call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Because yes, sir. this is witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. What's your name? My name is Kate. Kate. Yes, sir. From Benway State. Hold yes, my hands. Father, visit this family. You have revealed this in the name of Jesus. I cast this witchcraft. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Madam, you believe Jesus will heal you? Yes, I do. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Madam, what's your situation? I have nail pains. Since I, yeah, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, so I you... can't, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now, I can't walk with them. What can be? Hearing sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay, how about you? My leg is swollen for over five years. Five years? Where is, which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand? I can't stand for long. For a long time. Mama, how about you? Two months now. I started to leave this leg. Two, two months? Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis? Yes. Who else? Who again? I have leg problems. December. Leg problems. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs yes. swollen. Me oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. Of Jesus, sister, five years your leg has been swollen permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is the leg, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom freedom for your legs in the name of Jesus I break the power of witchcraft mama I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray for you right now every wicked spirit leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hands on your chest the Lord is bringing you deliverance right now in the name of Jesus this is witchcraft for five years I'm seeing a spirit go go in the name of Jesus, you can't remain in her. The swollen legs, I command the swelling to go down. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for your leg. In Jesus' name. I pray for your leg. That's where the pain is. Just lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. And tell me if there's any improvement. How many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed? Specifically in the area of healing. Let me just see your hands. Inside and outside, can you just wave it to the Lord? How many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Look how many people are trusting God for healings and miracles. I sincerely pray with all my heart that every church and every assembly of God will permit the power of God to operate in their place. It is not a thing of pride to have so many, look at, literally, maybe hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar. It's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities we are going to do this very very fast all of you who are sitting make sure you are connected and um, you are participating while we are ministering to the sick I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because I will be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and Pastor Jax will be ministering to you Whatever your challenge is, I want you to believe God. While you're standing, lift your voice and begin to say, Lord, I will not return back with this sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. Let your healing power deliver and strengthen. The Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. what is wrong with you just a laying on of hands the anointing of the spirit is like a drug the moment it enters your body it begins to work and it brings you healing you will notice that some people are standing for healing but as soon as hands are laid on them devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities Holy, 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 holy,
holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. place a place of healing and miracles look at the condition of this brother the legs look at me leave him remove your hand from him look at me have you tried walking before huh? lift your leg try lift it lift it lift the other one lift it lift it You are mighty on Look at me. Just stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come. 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 Just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come. Come. Come, come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. Look at on your throne. Completely the legs are open. If you are yet to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. Yeah. No other name. No other name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, and as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka Parata Katamaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Be testimonies in the name of Jesus, turn impossible situations into testimonies. Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened, be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord. Unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, 
people that are insane you cause them to be sane in the name of jesus we pray for contract that long delayed lord we pray that lord will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of jesus and we pray for a shield of protection over your saints lord in the name of jesus we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit let the fire of god call come on cold altars in the name of jesus let there be healings and touches in families in the blessed name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us lord we give you praise blessed father for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit we thank you in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah if you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by the anointing. It's not by English. Burdens are destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. This last segment, you've heard me say it again. This is the most powerful and most impactful segment. If you're not a man of the spirit, you may not understand what I'm saying. Please help them. This is the most powerful of this segment right now. Before we go into this where I begin to prophesy. There are two dimensions to prophecy. There is the revelatory dimension of prophecy. That dimension of prophecy gives you direction. But the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. That's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word. Never joke with the power of prophecy. That's the power that created the heavens and the earth. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Before we do that very quickly, everyone inside and outside, there are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I want to commit my life to the Lord. I've seen the miracles. I've seen the signs and wonders, but my way is not right with the Lord. You know that right now, as you're standing here, if the trumpet sounds, you're not making heaven. You know it right now. Having a Christian name is not the same as having a relationship with Jesus. There are some you've given your heart to the Lord at one time. Please help those under the anointing. I tell you, there will be a powerful impartation right now. I sense a heavy anointing on me already. That's why I'm doing this very quickly. Now, if you are here, please don't delay us. You are saying, I want to return home. For whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of God and you are saying Lord I have heard your word and I'm not ashamed to make Jesus my Lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now I'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. hallelujah hallelujah keep coming god bless you you have won it all for me hallelujah Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. Sasa di buchi Sasa di buchi Sasa di buchi We give you the praise Sasa di buchi One more time don't sit back there when you hear the voice.
voice of the Lord. Songs of Israel. I appreciate every one of you for coming out. This is the way to the cross. Listen, no matter what you achieve in life, if your eternal destiny is not secured, it says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. But he said, this life is in his son. Until you have the son, you do not have that life. Lift your right hand. Forget about who is looking at you. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. It's not a special number. This is a decision. There's one of you here. You smoke all these kinds of things. It go and the rest. Huh? But as you pray this prayer, the power is broken over your life. Say after me, as loud as you can from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life in Jesus name I pray now I stretch my hands over you and I declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of Jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of Jesus I declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life I release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of Jesus it is wiped away I set you free I break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah I want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session I want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the Lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentleman now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy walk in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where God perfects all things as I prophesy to you please I want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer Satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is, is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time I know you are trying as ushers just stand around Satan does not have authority I want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore Satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the Lord lift your hands I prophesied as I was commanded you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh 
seated on the throne you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister today that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life Shabbatalakata that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year an anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every student here oh for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding I'm praying for you some of you listen as I pray now some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head it's an impartation of knowledge right now oh God I release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka ta 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 inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy I command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day I speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor I don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of God is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now I see at least hundred people hundred people like fire hundred people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor 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 Parekete embratata lakata. I prophesy by an apostolic anointing. Favor, favor, favor. Everyone. 
holding anything that should be given to you for the next level I don't care where they are but I sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we are entering called August may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness Shababa. things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions Shakataba, lift your hands there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah it says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's god's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light i pray for you 
whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of Jesus I command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same day and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus christ that the lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as i speak father i come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit I declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow I prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.